So, good evening. Let's try to survive uh, this hour and the half. C can you close this door? That, uh, Thank you. So, back to Python. Just to, just to recap, last week, last week we saw a really basic element about Python that are string, numbers, and how to get input from the user. And on Monday, in the lab, you also try to place with string and uh, numbers and input from the user. So just to, to recap briefly, uh, we see last time that uh, this is the minimum, can be considered the minimum Python program that works. A print statement with a string that is a word. And a string in Python is written with a double quote at the beginning and at the end. It's right. Okay. And then we see that there is something called variable that can contain, well, the string and, or numbers, and so on. And that Python does not have semicolon at the end of the line, and that we can also take input from uh, the user um, with the row input function. Uh, give me your name. And then we can print this name. And if we run this, well, it prints out a word, and then I can insert here a name, and it prints out name. This is the last one hour and a half in five, in three minutes. One thing that uh, most of you did in the lab on Monday is to write, instead of a row input, input. And some of you said that it doesn't work, always work. So input is a Python 2 function. And if we, if we see what is input in the Python documentation, in the Python 2 documentation, maybe, okay. in the library reference, built-in function, and the input is here. It said that input is equivalent to eval row input, and after it said that in the end, consider using row input function for general input from user. So to ask users for input, you have to use row input. Input is equivalent to eval of row input. That is, uh, the inputs, the information that you insert in the input function is considered as Python code. So if we try here, and we say input of, uh, and we insert two as a number, it prints out two and it works. Because numbers in Python, in Python code are written like number here, two, three, four, without any symbol, without nothing. 
If we write input and we say, I don't know, hello, as a string in our mind, and we press enter, it gives us an error. It says to us that hello is not defined. Because, why? Because in Python code, hello is a variable, not a string. In Python code, a string is something that starts with a single or double quote, and then it has a, one of more words. And if we insert the string in this way, like in Python, it works, it gives us no error. More, if I create a variable that I call hello and I write inside the by, for example, and then I say input and I give to input the hello variable, it prints out by. Because by is the content of the input or the hello variable in this case. So input consider what you insert like Python code. So this is why for most of you, if you insert a number, it works. If you insert a, a string like hello as a variable, it doesn't work because it looks for a variable named in the same way previously in the code and this variable does not exist. Okay. So last time we did more or less this. In the lab you see two exercises, or simple exercises. Today we continue with other two a data type available in Python. We see strings, number, integer, and floating point number. But in Python there is also other two basic data types that are list and dictionaries. List are this one are sequence of element, multiple sequence, multiple element in sequence. List must be defined, well, this is a variable. There is then, so starting a list, a um, square bracket at the beginning of the list and at the end of the list. And inside the list, you can have every single type that we see last time. So you can have a list of string, you can have a list of number, like in the, in the second case, or a mixed list with number and string. Not one number, one string, one number, one string. In the first case, I can have a list fruit with apples, oranges, pears, comma, one. It's a mixed list. Whatever you want to put inside the list, it will be allowed. So each element in the list is a sequence, and you can access the single element by its index, like for a charter in a string. So uh, just to be clear, this is the zero element, orange is in this case the first element, the elements number one, and peers and the elements number two. In, in, this, in the, chain, the list named change, you have one that is the element number zero, pennies that is the element number one, two that is the element number two, and dimes that is the element number three. They are in sequence, like charter in a string. The other data type, basic data type, is a dictionary. A dictionary is a data structure that, like list, store multiple items, but first of all, not in sequence, and second, it stores pairs of elements. A dictionary starts with a braces, ends with another braces. It has a pair of elements. The first element of a pair is called key, and it's immutable in a string. You cannot, in a dictionary, sorry, you cannot change the key of an existing dictionary. And the second element is called value. So in this dictionary, in the first one, in the Lex dictionary, and snake and co are the keys, and six is the value of the first keys, it is and, this, the and has six legs. Zero is the value of snake, the snake has zero legs, and four is the legs, the number of legs, the value of co. 
keys are immutable, you cannot change keys. Values instead are mutable, you can also you can change values whatever you want. If you tomorrow you discover an ant with three legs, you can change six into three. A dictionary can store key and values like string, like number, or vice versa. So here in the first one we have uh, the ant, ant that is the key that is a string, and six is a value. In the second dictionary we have Italy that is the key, it is a string, and IT that is another string, it is the value. But we can also have a dictionary with a number as a key, and a number as a value, or a number as a key, and a string as a value. But they work in pairs. So each, and, uh, while in, the, in a list you can have multiple, uh, an infinite number of uh, all elements, three in this first case, five in the second, and four in the third, in a dictionary you always have a pair of elements. So three pairs, two pairs, five pairs of elements, a key and a value. The key is uh, split from the value from by the, with the, um, the colon, and uh, each pair is divided from the other with a comma. Then we have loops, and we can also use loops for cycling on list or dictionary. In Python there is, by default, the while loop that it's probably similar to one to some of you that already know some programming language, and to it is in line with what we need with know of uh, Python. So there is the while keyword, there is the colon in the end, there is the same four spaces indentation for each line of the while statement, and then there is the condition that must be true. In this case, the doctor variable uh, must be less than 13. So in this case, this while will initialize the doctor variable to one, and then while this variable is less than 13, uh, execute this uh, function on the doctor variable and then increment the doctor variable by one. Notice that in Python, these cannot be replaced by this. You don't have in Python the double plus to increment a variable. Don't have. And we already encountered the for loop or the for in loop. We encounter with the with a string, with charter, for print uh, the single charter of a string, like uh, in this case for a variable in uh, a string, print the single variable, same structure as before, and it prints out uh, all the single letter of, uh, of the hello variable. This same uh, I said last time that this is the only for loop available in Python. So if you look, if you look for something like for e equal to zero, semicolon e minor than ten, semicolon i plus plus. This does not exist in Python. The only for loop is this one. To obtain the same, uh, the same result, a result similar to this one, in Python exists a function that is named the range. The range function creates a list that contains all these numbers, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. It does not contain the last number. So ranges from 0 to 5 
is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The, five num the, number, the number five is excluded. The last number is excluded. This function will print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The same instruction, you can also write the same instruction in this, in this way. Um, sorry. So number in, for number in zero, one, two, three, four, print number. This is equivalent to writing for number in range zero, five print number. They are exactly the same thing. The difference between ranges, range and uh, a list in this way is that range, with range you can do something more. For example, you can, also, you can say the step between one number and another. So in this case, this range function will start from zero, will end in 24, and it prints number only each five number. So it prints out 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. 25 not, is not included, 24 is not uh, multiplied by five, so it's not present in the range. With the for loop, uh, as we said with uh, the other way to print a range, we can print the single element of a list in this way for a variable in the list, that is this one, print I love the name of the fruit. So if we execute this, we see that I love apples, I love oranges, and I love pears. Remember that this format here, string, comma, another string, comma, another string, and so on, works only concatenate two more strings and works only with print. And this comma adds this space that in this string is not present. Similarly, we can also use the for loop for cycling upon dictionary. Dictionaries are a little bit different because they have a key and a value. So we need to make uh, a little bit of attention. So the for loop is identical. There is the for, there is the in, there is the colon at the end, the indentation, and so on. We already encountered this format. This is a format to print a um, string. So this animal goes here, and numbers go, goes here. So it will print out the count of animal has the count of a number legs. Then we have two things that are a little bit different from before. The first one is this. This, if you remember, is named tuple. And we need a tuple and because we need two variables. And we need two variables because in this case, we want to print all the keys with each values associated values. So this variable will, will store one time ant, one time snake, one time co, and number will store one time six, zero, and then four. And then we have these other things. Up to now in the for loop, we have only the name of the variable or a function fruits, it's the entire list. Here we have range, that is the list between zero and four. Here we have the variable that stored the dictionary, that is legs, dot items. So legs is this, the entire dictionary. We want here to print 
the key and the values. So there is a function that is proper for dictionary, that is specific for dictionary, that is name item. If you never encounter this format, do you encounter this format something dot uh, a function? Mm? Yes. How many of you doesn't know object oriented Java doesn't, doesn't uh... okay. I will not teach you object oriented programming now, obviously. You, we can say, you can imagine that this is a function like all the other functions we met before. But uh, this is not a general function. Range is a general function. It can be applied whatever in any point of the code. Items is a function that exists in this specific case only for dictionary. Maybe exists another function that is named items that works with list. It does not exist, but maybe it can exist. But this is the item function for dictionary. It's not the item function for another element. It's not a generic item function that you've wrote. It's a specific item function that is a property. This is a method of the dictionary. It's its item function. All dictionary has the item function. And it, that function works in exactly the same way for all dictionary. This item function, what it is, what it does this item function? This item function give exactly this couple, two variables, the key and the values. So for these two, two variables that are returned by this function, this function will return these two the first time, then these other two the second time, and then this other the third time. For this, For this couple, first here, second, and third, print key has value legs. So we'll print out, sorry, ant has six legs, snake has zero legs, and co has four legs. If we want only the keys of a dictionary, there is another function that in this case, they are called method. There is a method that applies to dictionaries that is called keys, that return all the keys, no value, all the keys. If we want only values, there is a fun function that is called values, that returns only values of the dictionary, no keys. In this case, item will return two, two variables, the key and the values, each pair. Then, if we want to print a list or a dictionary, we can use the print function as before, the print statement, sorry, as before, and the print statement will print the, the list like uh, we, we wrote. So single square, in this case there are two strings, so here the, the string representation in Python with a comma that separates the two elements. If we want to print only one element of the string, we can use the index, uh, sorry, of the list. We can use the index like in strings. In strings, if we want to print out the first character, we say print uh, name of the string uh, square bracket zero. And in this case, uh, this function will print the first element, that is the X, like a string. If you remember, if uh, when we try to do an operation similar to this with string, with charter, Python give us an error. In string, we cannot replace a single charter inside an existing string, because string after the creation cannot be modified. You have to rewrite the entire string if you want to modify the variable that stores the string. With the list, you can modify each single element by acting, for example, on its index. So in this, this is the original list with the first element X and the second element milk. If we want to print the first element, it prints out X. 
if you want to replace butter with eggs, eggs with butter, you can do in this way. The list whose index is zero is to be replaced with butter. And if we print out to buy of zero, we will print out butter instead of eggs. And the entire list is now, after this operation, butter, comma, milk. If instead we want to add something, one element to a list, this is my to buy list with, uh, you have to buy tonight, I don't know, uh, eggs, milk, and then I want to buy chocolate. If we want to add an element to this list, we can use the append method, the append function. Notice that this is similar to the items function, items function as before. This is a, a function, append, that is specific to the list. It is variable dot append, and it works because this to buy is a list. So in this case, we'll add chocolate as the third element of a list and we effectively change this list. If you want to add more than one element, there is another method that is called extend that take another list and add this other list to the original list. So in this case, we have the to buy list with eggs and milk. We append, we add chocolate, and then we would add also flour and cheese so we extend the original list with another list declared here in parentheses that has as first element floor and as second element cheese. And the resulting list is eggs, milk, chocolate, floor, and cheese. Is five element in a list. An alternative way to extend a list is to use the concatenation symbol and it gives us a result that is identical to the extend. It concatenates to string to two list. If we want instead to print or to modify a portion of a list, we can use this uh, um, short way. This, uh, sorry, this way two index separated by a column is, is named slice. This is a slice, slicing operator. And it print, in this case, it ignored the element number zero, it prints the element number one, it prints the element number two, and then it stop here it, with the last number excluded like, like in uh, ranges. If we want to make a full copy of a list, we can use the slice operator without starting and ending number. Without starting and ending number, the slice operator assume that you won't start to zero and you want to end to the last element of the list. If the list is five element, is five. If the list have 100 element, is 100. In automatic, it slices the entire list. Slicing an entire list, you not sub, sub list, you not create a smaller list, but you create a copy of the list. This works also for string. The same slicing operator, you can use the same slicing operator to create a substring, a portion of a string, or to create a copy, a full copy of a string. Other way to modify a list. There is the pop method that uh, remove the last element. So if we, to, on this list, we say to buy dot pop, we remove the last element. If we do again after removing cheese, we it will remove floor. And again, chocolate, milk, and then we have the, the, the empty list. If we want instead to remove a specific element, we can use the pop method with the index. So pop of one, we remove zero, one, the element with index number one. Another way to remove a specific element is not by index or without indication, by, but by specifying the exact name of the element. 
So to buy dot remove cheese, we remove the cheese element that in this case is the last one. And uh, for, for removing milk, the remove, the remove method, we remove the milk object in a list. If an object is not present in the list, in the list, it gives you an error because it's not present. To remove all the other element except to uh, the one slaces, uh, sorry, if we want to remove a list of element from a list, you can use the del fun, uh, statement that remove all the elements inserted before. So in this case, we want to remove all the elements from two up to six. So we would like to save the first, the zero element and the first element all the other will be removed because two is this is chocolate and six is this is four this is five. So all the element except eggs and milk. So you can notice that string and list are quite similar because a string is a sequence of charters, but you have to but a list of charter is not a string. So for example, this is a variable that contains a list, a string. If we want to convert this into a list, we can use the list method, list function, that take, take a string and give us a list. So, If we have the name variable with Python inside as a string, and we want to print the list that is derived from the name function, you will obtain this, a list with each single charter separated by a comma, a list of string with, where each string is a charter. Okay. Um, if we want, if we have a sentence, if we want to split the sentence in each separate word by splitting on its uh, space, we can use the split method that is a method specific for storing. So in this case, we will obtain a list that contains this as first element, is the second element, and MEI as third element. Now, let's speak for a moment about copying the list. I have the first list that is named fruit that contains two string, apple and orange. And then I have another list that is favorite fruits that is equal to fruits. So in this moment, these two lists are identical. Then, uh, I want to add uh, this fruit to the first list, not to my favorite fruit, only to the generic fruit list. And then, uh, so what I'm expected, and that after this point, fruits will become apple, oranges, and banana. And favorite fruits, I, I would like that will remain apple and orange. So I print the first list, and the print also the second list. So let's try here. I have the fruit list with, uh, um, sorry, with apple and oranges, orange. And I have my favorite fruits that is equal in this moment to fruits. And I print favorite fruit just to, to see the content. Then I say that fruit append banana. And then I print fruits and print favorite fruits. 
So here, I expect that the output of these is apple, orange, and banana. And here, I would like to have apple and orange. That is identical of the, this example. So if I run this, we see that this is the first one is this favorite fruit list. That is apple and orange. It's correct because I made this assignment here. And then this is the fruit list with uh, these other fruits added, and this is good, this is correct. And then I print favorite fruit, and I have apple, orange, and banana. So there is something that uh, doesn't work. What is that uh, doesn't work? In your opinion? Why? I modify the first list. Why also the second list is modified? Yeah. Who spoke? Yes. But um, because we do not perform a full copy of the list. We only assign the beginning of, the, of the, sec, the, the first list to the beginning of the second list. But let's visualize this. Python tutor.com. This is a website to, for Python, but not only, to visualize code. So let's copy and paste this here in the browser. This is for Python 2.7, but I can also choose Python 3, Java, Ruby, JavaScript, whatever. Uh, I remove the print. Okay. So this is our minimal program. Two lists, and then I append a fruit to the first one, not to the second. If I visualize execution, uh, okay, so first line. In the first line, you see that executing the first line, only the first line, it creates a variable named fruits that points to another part, we can say, uh, that contains a list that is apple and orange. Then we can execute the second line, that is what we call the copy, and we see what happens. We see that it adds another variable that points to the same list, to the same identical list. So if we execute the fruits that happened, it properly adds the fruits here. But this point here, and also this point here. So performing this operation does not perform a copy of the entire list, but only add this arrow to the same identical list in memory in your computer. So if we want to copy for real, to separate list, So we don't make a copy Matolian reference. We can have, we have three options. The first one is using slice, as I see, as I showed you before. The second one is to create a new list starting from the first list, and this is the second option. There is a function that is named list that is the same, a similar function, our apparent to the int function we see last time, to the string function we see last time, that create a new list starting from an existing list. Or we can also extend an empty list, favorite fruits, with an existing list. Extend add to list, if we add 
an existing list to an empty list, we obtain the same, the, the new list with the content of the first one. And here it's fruits. So let's, these, if you have to choose, they are equivalent. This is, we can say, the best method. They are equivalent in practice. This is more Pythonic, we can say. Let's try here. Instead of, can I add this? Instead of doing this, I can use the list method, list function. So visualize execution. Okay. So the first line is as before, identical. The second line, you see what happens. The second line creates a new object, a new list that is right now identical to the first one, but it's not the first one. So if we add a fruit to the first one, it is added here, but this other copy is unchanged. So this happened for list. So be careful when you assign a list to another list, you do not make a copy of the list, only uh, do not copy the entire list, only these, you can say, R of this pointer, the reference to the list. Then there are several other operations that are possible with list. And we can have a look to the Python documentation. In the tutorial, there is number five, data structures. So we see that there is an append method that we use and extend, but there is also an insert method that add a specific item in a specific position. The remove method we will encounter, also the pop. The index return the index the number of a specific item. Or index of, mm, I don't know, index of, for example, uh, Apple in this case is zero. And this, num and this method will give you the number. Count of X, return the number of time that X appear in a list. Sort, to sort an entire list, for example, alphabetically. Reverse, to reverse the order of an entire list in place, and so on. So, now, the same for a dictionary. To print a dictionary, we can use the print method. The print method will display, display the, um, the dictionary like I defined here. Good. Then, let's try to modify a dictionary like uh, uh, before. There is the Lex dictionary. I can access to the single element by his key. So, Lex of spider is equal to 273. Okay, so if I print legs after this point, I have a dictionary with ants six, key snake value zero, and key spider value 273. It's okay, we can add a new key here and a new value in this way to a dictionary. But, you, you know that a spider does not have 273 legs. Spider, fortunately, typically has eight legs. So if we want to add, change a value, you can use the same way to use the key and a new value. Legs of the key, the key is not mutable, but the value R, so legs of spider is equal to eight, and this will change effectively the number of legs of the spider. 
if I want to remove a couple key value from a dictionary, I can use the del method that applies to dictionary and receive the key from the dictionary. In a dictionary, the mutable, the, the, the equivalent we say to the index is the key of a dictionary. So to, dele to delete 0, 8 with spider, we can delete spider. By deleting the key, we also delete the value. And if, and if we want to empty entirely this dictionary, there is a method to, to do this that is clear, that clear, that empty this dictionary totally. So, another case. We have this dictionary similar to before. Legs with ant and six as a value and snake that has zero legs. We want to print the number of only the number of legs from ant. So we can write in this way, legs of ant, print legs of ant, and it will give us six. So again, legs equal. Hello? Okay. So in this way, I create an empty dictionary, only braces, then I fill the dictionary and uh, colon six and snake uh, colon zero. Then print uh, uh, legs of ant. If we execute this, uh, you see six. If I want to, if I, I make a mistake. I suppose that in my legs dictionary there is still a spider. I want to print the number of legs of a spider. That is the same line as before, but with something that is not actually in the dictionary. If we execute this, it will see, well, six, and is correct, and then an error. Let's say key error spider. Well, because in the dictionary there's no key named spider. So we have, a, but there are occasions in which we don't know any time which value is in a dictionary. So we can check if a value is in a dictionary or get the value but without having an error. So in this way, we have an error. If we want to check if a key is in a dictionary, we can use the in keyword. That is the same keyword that we use in the for loop, but it gives us a Boolean. So if a key is included in the dictionary, it gives us true, otherwise it gives us false. So, if I want to check if spider is in the dictionary, in legs, it say that no, spider is not in legs. If I want, instead of checking, if I want to get spider from the dictionary, like before, even if a spider is not present in the dictionary, I can use the get method that does not throw an error, but it gives none, because, because there is no key in the dictionary, the value associated to this key is inexistent, is none. But this get method can be also personalized so that uh, It does not give you none, but uh, for example, a number, you can say that uh, 100, 1 million, 1,000, 1 million is uh, the number of key of uh, a wrong uh, item, or also a string, like not present.
So if we run this, spider is not present, and it gives us a more polite, a more clear message that is chosen by us that is not present. So no, no error and no non-variable. Um, Finally, not finally, almost finally. We, up to now, we have used uh, function and methods. In Python, you can also define a new function and new function. How do you define a function? With the def keyword, the colon at the end, a name of the function, written in the same uh, syntax of a um, variable, and after the column, this, the usual four spaces indentation, and what it, it does, the function. In Python, you have to first define the function, and then you can call the function to use it. So if we wrote this, this is the function definition, when the Python interpreter execute this line, it will print hello. A function can also have a parameter that is something that you pass to a function. In this case, if you pass MEI student, this function will print hello MEI students. A function can also have the default parameter. That is, if you insert an explicit parameter like this, this function will print hello students. If you doesn't insert any parameter, like in this case, it assume that the parameter, the variable name, contains always this value. So it will print in this, in this first case, hello MEI. A function can not only print something on the screen, but it can also return a value of some operation that it performs. So in this case, for example, this is the same function as before. Instead of printing here inside the definition of the function, I return a string that is in this case with no parameter, hello MEI, and then if I print greetings, that is this string variable, I will print hello MEI. A function can return multiple parameters, like a tuple, like the items uh, method of dictionaries that returns two parameters. In this case, the return uh, keyword is the same. It returns a tuple with two elements. The first one is this hello, and the second one is this name. So when we call the function, in greeting, uh, we will have uh, Hello, the first one, and in person we will have name, that in this case is MEI. If I print greeting, that is the first variable, then two, and then person, I will obtain hello to MEI. This is called, I don't remember if I already said you, this operation of taking uh, two variable from one um, function is called unpacking. It unpacks the, the content of this, uh, of this function in two or more uh, separate uh, variables. Functions can be documented in this way. This is called a doc string, and it uh, can be generated as a separate documentation for a function, separate from the code. The doc string is written as the first line after the, the function definition as a triple single quote and a string um, of multiple line after the, inside this triple single quote. Then, again, function that allow us to have a code more clean, cleaner, sorry, and uh, more organized can be also put together in modules. 
Modules are a way to organize logically code and they consist of files. So if I want, this one could be a module. This is a Python file. If we imagine here we have some function, this, is, this could be a, a module. A Python file can, uh, sorry, a Python file as a module can define and implement function, can contain variables, and so on. And typically, by convention, the, fi the file containing the module is called in the same identical way. So the math module, for example, resides physically in a file named math.py. If we realize a task module, the task module will be inside that task.py files. There is a one-to-one -one mapping between the name of the module and the name of the file. There are several ways to import a module inside another existing, another Python uh, program, Python script. For example, in Python, there is the math module that have various mathematical functions. And for example, it, it defines also the pi variable, 3.14 and so on. If we want to use this variable that is defined in another file inside our uh, script, our application, our program, we can import the entire module and then to use the pi variable of the math module, we have to write math.py. In this way, we can also have here, for example, a pi variable that contains, uh, I, I don't know, something. But in this case, we'll, we'll use the pi variable of this specific module, not my defined here, but this. In the same way, if pi was, uh, for example, a function, we can write math.py, open, close, parenthesis. Another way, if we want to import only the pi number from the model, is writing, not import the name of the model, but from the name of the model, import this specific variable of the specific function. So in this way, we import only pi, from uh, the math model. And so if we print pi, we'll print this one. If we redefine pi here before the print, like for example one, in this case, this print will not print this. We print one. Because we redefine locally this variable, inside our file, this variable. Another way to import module, but this is a bad way, do not use, is from, is similar to the previous one, from math import asterisk, import everything. This is a, a way to avoid because it import every single variable, every single function of this method, of this module inside your file. So if you cannot, if you want to use anything from this, you have to, you must not write a function or a variable that is named in the same way. Because if you call, for example, here a pi variable, you overwrite this pi variable. If this has a method uh, SQRT, and you define here a function that is called SQRT, you overwrite the original function. So be careful here. Do not use this way. Prefer the first or the second one. If you need more than one item from a module, prefer the first one. If you need only one variable or one function, the second or one, two, three, a limited number of function variable, you can use the second. Last three things, really. You can also take a common line parameter that are parameter that, again, okay, that are parameter, just to 
that are parameters that you write here. So for example, if you have a Python program named uh, tasks dot pi, and I would like to give these uh, them one, two, three. These three are parameter. This is the first parameter of this line, this is the second, this is the third, this is the first. If we want to take this inside, the process inside our file, file we can import argv from the sys module and we can unpack the argv in this variable. In this case, we want to take the two elements. The first is the name of the, of the script and the second is the first variable. And so we can use inside our program. So for example, here, if I wrote Python my script.py one, and then I print the script is called script. Script is this, script is the first element here. I will print my script. The second element from this is stored here in this first variable, and this is one. So I can take element from the command line to use in, our, in my program. I can also read the files from Python, thanks to the sys module. Again, from sys import argv. Then from argv, I take the second element. The first one is the name of the script. It's always named the script. The second element is the first argument. In this case, I suppose that writing Python, my script, dot py, the name of the file to be open. And with this open function and the name of the file, I store all the file, the content of the textual content of the file in this variable. And then I can print out the file name, and with this read, I can also read the content of the file. It will show on screen the content of the file. I can also write, in a similar way, files by importing from the sys module argv. Same as before, the first argument, I suppose, uh, is the name of the file. I open, like before, the file, but in writing mode. In the first case, I open without other elements, without other parameter, I open in read mode. Now you open write mode, then I can perform a various operation. I can write one line each time with the write method. Target is the the file, the reference to the file I just opened in write mode, or can also truncate, clear, empties all the file content. And then after writing something, here I wrote a line, I can close the file, so save the file on the disk. At the end of this uh, set of slides, there are a list of links the first one is the Python documentation, the second is the Python tutorial, the third one is a short Python course made by Google, the fourth one is Python Tutor, the website that uh, allows you to visualize uh, um, Python variables and elements in, uh, in memory, and there are other four um, links. So. Um, just only one thing before going uh, home. In the lab on Monday, I see that most of you uh, use, this, use the PyCharm, that is good, it's okay. And other of you program with something like this, well, the equivalent uh, Linux of this. Okay, I have with this and um, something like this when it opens. And, okay, and uh, typically what I see is that you write here um, the gedit uh, name of the file, it opens the editor, you wrote something here, you close 
this, and then you write Python uh, exercise one dot pi, and then it doesn't not work. So you again did gedit the file, it reopen another text editor, you modify the file, you close, and so on. Uh, so uh, we suggest you, it's okay, but maybe not in this same identical way, but you can, a lot of people, uh, again, program with a text editor from one side and the terminal from the other side. It's okay. But with the text editor from one side always open and the terminal on the other side always open, not switching continuously and so on. But you have to know exactly what you do. And now, and in this course for various background that you have is quite difficult that you are really expert of Python programming and probably also terminal execution and so on. So our suggestion is to, to forget for one moment all these and try to work inside the environment, uh, the integrated developer environment that has a terminal here that has also interactive, you can also open another um, a real terminal here where you can wrote whatever you want. And uh, it has also autocompletion feature, debug feature, and this is especially important when we will start to use Python for web programming or for uh, integrating external libraries or real devices here and in the lab. So just a, a final suggestion. So I stop here and have a good uh, night.